hi friends the situation is as follows for a long time i promised a relative to make for him a charger for a car battery but i never did get around and so soon the person's birthday so i decided to kill two birds with one stone and to fulfil the promise and make a gift for his birthday and if you think that this is a tricky act just watch this video and you will understand that it is easier to go and buy some kind of gift than to make it yourself a lot of time and effort has been invested in homemade products i will not even talk about financial costs in general there is enough video on the channel about homemade chargers and in order to diversify the content at least a little i will show the complete construction process from zero that is there will be circuit assembly adjustment winding of the transformer and everything else i hope you will be interested let's begin the relative lives in the village and the future charger will sometimes work in unfavorable conditions for example in a barn yes the usual village everyday life straw chickens and so on hence the first requirement is reliability this word means that charging should not be afraid of frost, moisture, and also human inattention factor. It should have protection against power polarity reversal, overheating protection, protection against short circuits, and automatically disconnect the battery when fully charged. It should also be possible to adjust the charge current. Well, basically, this is all. When it comes to reliability and harsh operating conditions, switching power supplies aren't quite the case. Yes, they are more compact, cheaper, lighter, but no pulse generator in terms of reliability can compete with the good old iron transformer, and therefore we will use it. I don't have a ready-made transformer with the required secondary voltage, so we will reel up it. But we will talk about this later. First, let's figure out the adjustment circuit. At one time, I drew and ordered a bunch of printed circuit boards for the Resource 1 charger. Chargers, according to this diagram, were produced in the USSR, and in my opinion, this is a fairly reliable circuit with all protections and auto shutdown. I already talked in detail about how the circuit works in the video. The link is in the description. Later, on my part, the circuit underwent some changes. Firstly, I transferred it to modern components and used the medium power transistors, although this is unnecessary and it is quite possible to put low power ones. And the main change is that instead of two thristors and two diodes that were in the original circuit, now there is one thristor and a full fledged bridge on four diodes. That is, you can put a ready made bridge similar to the KBPC5010 and one thristor, which is economical in terms of financial cost and also saves space in the charger's box. I also made an indicator of the wrong polarity of the battery. The board of the old model, which appears in the video, is with two thristors, but it can be converted without any problems to work with one thristor, simply without soldering the indicated components. I also made new boards for this circuit. The boards are one-sided. You can make at home using any available method and there is no special point in ordering at the factory. But on the other hand, advertising and good advertising is the one that is appropriate. So if you need beautiful factory boards like mine, just download the project archive from the link in the description, find there a folder with the name Gerber and upload it to the website of our sponsor GLCPCB. Then choose the color of the solder mask that you prefer, pay for the order and wait for the delivery. The company can make for you boards of almost any complexity and size within a reason. The boards can be either simple or multi-layer, with or without milling, with gold-plated tracks or simply tinned. In general, the plant has many possibilities. You will find the link to the GLCPCB website in the description. It is important to note that the above circuit works in two modes, manual or automatic. The operating mode is set by the toggle switch. In manual mode, you will lose all protections. I advise you to use this mode rarely, only when there is a need to check the charger itself for operability or some kind of light bulbs. In automatic mode, you will have protection against incorrect battery connection and short circuit, also auto shut down when the battery is fully charged. I will point out that there will be no voltage at the output of the circuit in the automatic mode. The charging process will begin if the battery is connected. 
Moreover, if the battery is low very much, the circuit will start anyway. Adjustment of the system is very simple. It is necessary to connect the charger to any regulated power source and set the end of charge voltage on it. This voltage depends on the type of the battery you have. Let's say it is 15 volts. We set the 15 volts on the laboratory power supply, then slowly rotate the trimmer on the board and stop when the LED is triggered. Next, we glue the trimmer screw and the adjustment is complete. The variable resistor makes it possible to smoothly regulate the charging current. This circuit is a thyristor phase pulse power regulator and produces an unstable voltage, but you can be sure that due to auto shutdown, the battery will not boil and overheat. And one more advantage, the output voltage is pulsating, which can help in the desulfation of the battery. Let's put this board aside and take care of the other components of our charger. I will put a pointer meter as the current indicator, which is also an ammeter. I also have a digital one, but that uh, will not work quite adequately due to the shape of the current at the output. Here is beautiful ammeter with a tolerance of 1.5% for a current of 10 amps and has a built-in shunt in general what you need. As the box will use the case of all computer power supply, but it needs to be slightly redone. The power thruster will be like this for 25 amps. It has a good power reserve, more than enough for our purposes. The diet bridge KBPC5010 from China is counterfeit, but it calmly tolerates current under 15 amps and maybe even more. On the front panel, we have a reliable toggle switch for selecting a mode, a battery charge current regulator, mains polarity reversal, and end of charge indicators. On the back is the power switch. Later, a mains fuse compartment will be added. Of course, on lower part of front panel, we have the power terminals. I decided to put terminals into which you can stick ordinary pins or at worst, just press the wires. These are pincers from copper-plated aluminum, but quite solid and will last a long time, given that we have no more than 7 to 8 amps of current. Next, we need to reel up power transformer. Here, I would like to recommend my own video with a complete winding process and calculations of main transformers. Link is in the description. First, the old transformer must be completely disassembled and all factory windings removed. In some cases, mains winding can be left. It depends on whether it will fully approach. I decided to remove all. I have core from an old UPS transformer. Next, we must determine with the winding data. We need a transformer with two windings, primary mains and secondary, which is designed for a voltage of about 20 volts and a current of about 7 amps. And then you can take the book Technical Creativity issued at 1955 and on page 170 we see a complete step-by-step -step process for calculating network transformers. All you need to do is follow the instructions from the book and calculate with a big old calculator. Well, of course, you can open any online calculator or application for calculating mains transformer, drive in the parameters and instantly get the results. But on the other hand, a book, a calculator, a cup of hot tea in a glass holder, although it's just lemonade, in general, it's up to you. Here is the calculation of my transformer. I think here is everything clear because I signed all, but anyway, I will say a few words. According to Ohm's law, knowing the voltage and current on the secondary winding, we calculate the output power. Let's take the efficiency of the transformer on average 80%. Based on this, we get the power consumed from the mains. Next, you can calculate the required cross-section of the transformer core for the desired output characteristics and to compete with the cross-section of the iron that you have. This will allow you to understand if the core is suitable for your application. We measure the thickness and width of a set of plates, multiply these numbers and get the cross-section. Next, we calculate the turns per volt. Multiplying that value by the mains voltage of 220 volts, we get the number of turns of the primary winding. In the same way, we get the number of turns of the secondary winding. Determining the diameter of the wire is very simple. 
we have constant coefficient 0 0.8. In the case of a mains winding, the first you need to calculate the maximum current consumption from the mains, and then using a well-known formula determine the diameter of the mains winding wire. These calculations are made for a current density of 2 amps per square millimeter, but if the cooling is good and the current density can be increased to 3 amps per square millimeter. In this case, the constant factor 0 0.8 can be reduced to 0 0.65. The above calculation is simplified but quite good. Often many manufacturers, in order to save wire, reduce the number of winding turns, which leads to an increase of the null load current and to the heating of the core. Of course, you can deviate from the calculations in a small limit, and this will not lead to anything bad, but not overdo it. I started drill up with a primary winding, turn after turn, layer by layer, until we get the required number of turns. I used a copper wire, diameter 0.51 mm. After winding each layer, we isolate with a couple of layers of ordinary molar tape. You can use another isolation material. After the primary winding, we wind the secondary in the same way. A wire is also a copper, a diameter of 1.5 mm. This wire has fabric insulation, quite thick and good quality, so I didn't install additional interlayer isolation for the secondary winding. It fit with difficulty, and in some places the distance from the iron to the copper wire is minimal, so for safety I poured epoxy resin into the gaps, and at the end covered the transformer with varnish. This worsens the cooling conditions, but provides moisture protection, reduces vibration, and generally increases the reliability of the transformer. It remains only to test the transformer. Of course, I carried out all the tests before pouring with varnish. The first launch is done for the safety through a 40 watt mains lamp, which is connected in series with one of the mains wires. We make sure that the lamp doesn't glow, that is, there are no short circuits, and then we turn on the transformer directly into mains. We check the output voltage, 21 volts, almost like a pharmacy. Then I load it with the rheostat, set the current to 10 amps, which is higher than the calculated 1 by 3 amps. Voltage drop is up to almost 18 volts. I left it to work for an hour. An hour later, I made temperature measurements. The core has warmed up slightly, up to 35 degrees Celsius. The windings are slightly more than 60. This is completely normal, given that the current in a real charger will not be 10 amperes, but about 7. We check the output voltage, 21 volts, almost like in a pharmacy. Before assembling the charger, the case with the front panel was painted. This panel is a separate plate which was cut out of thick fiberglass. As you can see, there is no fan in the device and this is possibly a minus, but all chargers use this principle worked fine without any fans. The thyristor will not overheat due to the operating at switch mode. The bridge at such currents also not overheat. The transformer heats up if you drive it for a long time at maximum currents, but the temperature is safe. The finished charger looks in the spirit of the old school. I myself really love this performance, stern and reliable. I don't know what needs to be done to burn it, although you can burn everything if you wish. Well, I hope you like this video, and the future owner will like the device. Let me remind you that you will find all the additional information in the description. Please rate this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my Instagram to keep abreast of events. Now I say goodbye, until we meet again, with you as always was Kassian TV.